You've got to have people. And to have people to challenge you to invest in areas that people don't publicly praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And I want to speak that over your life right now. God's mercy is holding everything in place. Mm -hmm. I know it may seem chaotic, but you don't understand that it could be so much worse yes. than what it is right now. And the mercy of God has you watching this podcast. Mm -hmm. The mercy of God got your eyes peeled to this because you could have been in a different place. Mm -hmm. And the grace of God is working through the words I'm speaking. I didn't plan to say this, but God planned for you to hear it. Mm -hmm. For your address, you're, you're not even in the same country I'm in. Mm -hmm. And God still reached you through technology. That is grace. Mm -hmm. And why Michael Bethany? How is it? Can I just be prophetic? To the person I'm talking to right now, I'm, please inbox me and let me know when you get this. How is it that God used the person? And I'm not super famous. I'm not the biggest gospel or Christian worship artist by far. But for some reason, you're in Africa, you're in Indonesia, you're in another country, and somehow you've been watching me for years. Mm -hmm. You've been watching these YouTube videos. You found this guy in the States. And now you, because you saw that music, oh, you stumbled your way to life in the wild mm -hmm. podcast, and you're watching season two. Mm -hmm. It's because the grace of God works through the details. Mm -hmm. You don't even know how to how you don't have to know how to get there. Mm -hmm. The grace of God moves you when you're not even moving. <laughs> it, <laughs> he, he leads you. Mm -hmm. He he makes you lie, you know, in in green pasture. Like he literally he leads you. Yes. And he's leading you right now yes. to this very moment to ensure that you get this word in your heart. There's nothing wrong with you. Yes. yes. I love you. Yes. I'm for you. Mm -hmm. And everything you thought was lost, I have the power to redeem. So good. Everything you thought was lost due to the actions that you're guilty of, mm -hmm. I can turn it around and make it seem like everything was working according to plan because all things still yes. work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And what the enemy thought he was doing for your demise, God is taking and repurposing for your good. So good. So good. And amen to that. Amen. <laughs> amen. Well, I don't know where you are. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. <laughs> Whatever you got to say. <laughs> so, oh yeah, that's, that's just a... Isn't that a beautiful picture of the gospel, though? It is. You know, and is. this isn't what I talked about saying, but we've talked about this before and about how a marriage, a Christian marriage, should be another tool mm -hmm. for the gospel to work and be on display, you know. Um, and so I, I, I would even dive a little bit deeper and say that marriage is a tool of sanctification. Yes. It's a, it's a tool of God's perfecting grace. Ooh, another book recommendation. Sacred yes. Marriage. Ooh, come on. Oh, and I don't I don't forgot who wrote that one. But man, ladies, that's a good one. Especially if you have a spouse that's really struggling with their relationship with God. That's a good book. Okay, so let's go back to this. Mm -hmm. You found the books. Mm-hmm. Well, not just books. So the next thing I wanted to bring, just kind of give the ladies books for me, from my mindset to help me kind of track where Michael was and what I did my best to do then is to also help encourage him to build relationships with men that I saw that were in more advanced stages. Mm. And see, see, here's the, another thing the book did for me. <laughs> this dude <laughs> over <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah. if you, if, cause here's the challenge. If you don't have an outside perspective, again, ladies, trust your instincts, but not necessarily your judgments or your conclusions. 
You'll think that someone being a friend to your husband or a mentor to your husband is a good thing because he seems more advanced in his career, maybe more advanced financially, yeah. maybe more advanced in certain areas. But when it comes to character development, um, there are certain characteristics of the warrior man, of the sage man that you won't understand until you get someone else from the outside to just give you a roadmap. So as many men mm. around him that are in more advanced stages that you can encourage. So ladies, just, just work with me. Talk. Even if Please. he bonds with that other man doing things that you may not necessarily like, like, Hey, he found a mentor and they like to go play video games together. He found a mentor. They like to go golf. He found a mentor and maybe it causes him to be away from you. Maybe a little longer than what you may like. Guess what? If he's with a man in a more advanced stage, he's going to come back a better man. That's good. Who? Okay, so who do you recall that was for me? I'll give you three. Oh, yeah. You already know. We may have to bring one or all of these all guys of on mm -hmm. the podcast. This, is be this has become all about y'all looking at all of my development. <laughs> So you go, you got to get this, yeah, the stages of Michael Bay. <laughs> Good grief! So who who are those people that you can recall? Dad Titus, Dad Larry Titus. Shout out! He I don't we know, call him Dad, but we call him Dad. Yeah. He's he's a he's a lot of people all over the country call him Dad. Yes, I went on a trip with Larry Titus. We went to Brazil. I was invited to to do a live recording. What was it? No, it was well, I guess it was a live recording. It was recorded mm -hmm. with a small audience there. Brazil, all the songs in Portuguese, except for the songs I was singing. Isn't that amazing? I, and I learned a little Portuguese for that as well. Yeah, that was cool. So I do this recording, and he accompanies me because they've been to Brazil a lot. Mm -hmm. So the, the artist or the pastor, Virginia, that was doing this, her and her husband, we meet when we first get there. The first day, we sit down in a um, Brazilian barbecue spot, and it's... Ooh. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we sit down in one of the real spots. And let me tell you about that cheese bread. That bread. Wow. So we're eating, we're eating the bread. <laughs> and before the dinner was over, they were like, they don't know this. They don't know him. Mm -hmm. They just met him. They were like, in Portuguese, getting someone to translate to him mm -hmm. who was accompanying me. Mm -hmm. Will he be their spiritual father too? Wow. And I'm like, he didn't say anything. It's a beautiful thing. What did he do? And it was just something that he carries. Yeah. That he, people can tell, this is a guy who not only has something that's valuable, but is willing to share it. Yeah. Willing to so connect. Larry Titus, all mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Terry Bays. Terry. Whew. I got a nickname for Terry, but I'm going to keep that to myself. <laughs> Go ahead. Terry. Terry. I love you, man. <laughs> Um, I think you've had some good pastors. Yes, yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think as far as just personal relationship, mentorship, I would say those are the top two. You ha you've had good friends too. Yes. Your late uh, best friend, Risha. Risha Nunley. Risha Nunley. Um, Believed Kenya. in me yeah, like nobody. Me. Now, he wasn't necessarily... You guys were in the same kinds of stages, but he was he was also trying to grow and develop. Yes. So y'all were, you know, at, at the same level, but he a was mindset a, that he was a more. few years older than me. So he yeah. was always right out in front of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And y'all yeah. grew together. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah. And I would say Abel Pena. Abel, yes. Been a oh, great absolutely. He's been a good friend. Yeah. You do you have some? Well, I I, I just want to make sure I add to this that Larry Titus is 80 years old. Mm -hmm. I just don't want, I don't want y'all to miss out on that. <laughs> that man is, is nearly 40 years my senior. Mm -hmm. So when she says finding someone, I don't mean like someone that, first of all, when she was talking about someone playing video games, that's not him. We're, we don't, True. <laughs> when we get together, we eat and talk. That's what we, like, <laughs> we, we might go to Africa together. Mm -hmm. He's going to preach. That's, <laughs> we may go to London. Accidental. I'm just saying those are places we've been. I'm not. I'm not flexing. I'm just saying. You know, we just so happen to fly. You know, we went over there. Uh, but my point is, 
it's it's not about finding someone who you think is cool, right? Or 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 relevant culturally, right? It's finding somebody who has what you need, like yeah, yes, Terry, Terry, t- Terry. Right. He's in his 60s. Right. What's up, folks? I hope you guys are enjoying the podcast. Uh, I just wanted to stop for a moment to talk about the Overflow Live album uh, that was released in June of 2023. This album was was one that really was in my heart for, for years. And um, it's been a beautiful thing to see the songs that I've lived with, wrote, and and processed and worked on release and finally come out and see people listening to it and being blessed by it. So I want you guys to be blessed by this album you can listen on all the streaming platforms one of my favorite ways of listening to this album is is watching on youtube and actually reliving the live recording so check it out on youtube apple music spotify pandora amazon all those places i know you guys are gonna love it god bless y'all peace and I'm going to say this, too, even personality wise, don't get hung up on that because they're not, we don't even have the same kind of personality. Because yeah, I'm thinking about people like uh, Pastor Bellamy. Yeah, and, Marcus you know, Greg, Bellamy. Thank certain, you. You know, yes. people that were what you would call pencil pushers and, you know, not creative at all. And Marcus that, Bellamy, yeah. when I got to Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship for the stint that he was there with me, mm-hmm. he was the person he was like. For all intents and purposes, he's like the executive pastor. He was like, he was running a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Smart guy. Very smart guy. And when I first met him, I thought, ah, we ain't going to click. He's lame. (laughs) Dang. I didn't say that. (laughs) I I almost gave you the Kevin Hart. (laughs) All right. All right. Listen. Listen. Because he's not not creative. He's not outwardly creative. Let's stop it. Don't say (laughs) nothing else about Marcus Bellamy, okay? Don't Don't you say nothing about Marcus, okay? I love you, Marcus. Marcus <laughs> is Marcus you. is one of the smartest guys. He is, and and, and like he, his administrative mind Amazing. is just off the charts. And yeah. he looked at me and said, "You have a, a gift of administration." I was mm-hmm. like, "Coming from you," mm-hmm. and he just started telling me about myself. This mm-hmm. guy that I never thought he don't sing, he don't exactly. write. Exactly, he's not creative. Yeah, he don't do none of that. He don't mm-hmm. paint. Mm-mm. Not that I'm aware of. He wears suits every day. He wears suits yep. and ties. Yep. He does. He wears everything that I'm not gonna wear. <laughs> V-neck vest. Now I got one, but I'm not gonna wear a shirt under it. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, all the different things. It's like it wasn't his vibe. It was his wisdom. That's it. And not only the wisdom, but his willingness to share it with me. That's good. Because wisdom is universally applicable. Yes. And the wisdom that God had given him work for me. Yep. He was yep. the person I had I had to that point I had I had really become a, a greater asset to the kingdom that I was aware of. I just needed someone who I admired right. to say. So, and that's going back to again ladies what I talked about earlier. So drawing out the heart of your husband as an individual because for Michael, he grew up first in the engineering field. Yeah. It was it was a, a, a talent and a skill that he had. Well, fast forward to the season that we were in when we met this gentleman. He wasn't necessarily being recognized for that first, but another man of wisdom was able to draw that out of his heart there and help to develop that. So, so yeah. because because here's when it, in it when it comes to being a platform talented person, you'll see this in the book. It's a very specific term I'm using. Because it's something when when someone has an ability that that everyone wants to showcase, mm-hmm. they can dance. Oh, you got to people got to see that or exploit. In other you words, can exploit. okay. Here we go. Here we go. That's my that's 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 Siobhan talking right now. <laughs> when people see you do that thing, mm-hmm. oh yeah, we got to have him over. He's gonna do that. We go. He gonna mm-hmm. sing. He gonna. Mm-hmm. Oh, he can play. That boy can play. He gonna mm-hmm. play. For, you know, when you have that type of thing, people will praise. Your platform talents, yes, and ignore the other giftings that God has given you. So mm-hmm. much so that you will ignore them too. Mm-hmm. Things that you do in private that no one celebrates, you mm-hmm. won't showcase. Mm-hmm. And not only will you not showcase them, you won't develop them mm-hmm. because they don't bring you praise. And at the time, maybe they, they don't bring you money. They yeah. don't bring you notoriety. Yeah. I never came out bragging. Hey, guess what designs I did this week? I worked on a hospital. No one cared about the <laughs> hospital that I designed the power distribution and lighting for. No one cared. Guess what? I I learned how to calculate elevators and no one cared. Yeah. 
They wanted to hear me sing and maybe preach or teach or do something in ministry. But having someone look at me and say, oh, push that stuff aside for just a second. It ain't going nowhere. But there's something else I think we've overlooked. Yeah. Yeah. And you have that. And it takes a person with a level of wisdom Mm -hmm. to not um, to not um, insult or, you know, you just push your talents aside, but to also call out, call out something else. Because what I have found is the talents in and of themselves from a platform standpoint are never strong enough to really live alone. The platform for that talent Mm -hmm. is the gifting of administration. That's good. If you're going to be a successful artist, if you're going to be a successful worship leader, Mm -hmm. if you're going to be a successful pastor, you need some other abilities to be as sharp uh, and as, as tensionally developed as the talent you're platforming. If you platform a talent on top of a compromised integrity, Uh-oh. the stage is going to fall. Someone someone that's talented, but they're still, they haven't conquered the following stage. Hold on. Stage. Talented, <laughs> but undeveloped. Come on. Talented, but undisciplined. <laughs> that's tough. You don't have enough on the platform mm-hmm. to hold your talent. Mm-hmm. Your talent's too heavy yeah. to be set on top of something as weak as the type of character that you now possess. Yeah. You've got to have people. And to have people to challenge you to invest in areas that people don't publicly praise. Yeah, that's good. That's so important. Yeah, so good. Thank you for reminding the folks I've got engineering skills in my bag. You do. I really do. And your sons do too. Yes, my yeah. boys do. And, I, we, and we encourage our kids we do. Yeah. To, to do other things. We, they, they're both musically talented and gifted, but we understand. We were just talking the other day with, with our son Otis, like, okay, He's like, I want to, I want to do music and I want to study theology. You would think I'd be like, yes. I was like, okay, that's great. That's great. But let, let me tell you about the other things I did. Right. <laughs> I worked at McDonald's. <laughs> okay. I learned how to communicate in a corporate space. I learned how to organize. I learned how to talk to people who don't know, know me enough to like me Come on. and learn how to garner their respect by my work. Yeah. And not yeah. my parents' reputation or by my denomination yeah. or by my ability to sing. When I went into Family American Assurance and I was I was taking all those documents and processing them and, and creating everything like because they were going digital, they did not want me to sing. Mm-hmm. You can't sing in that office. Not Hush. Be quiet. We're working. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need to be focused. Come on. And I could not smile and say, praise the Lord. They don't. Listen, I'm not a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm paying you Mm -hmm. for the job. And I am a believer and I still don't want to hear it. I need you to go to your desk and work. Mm -hmm. And so the point is I'm teaching them to be well-rounded in their development so they have enough structure beneath Mm -hmm. to hold whatever God's going to do with that platform talent. It's so good. Okay. So you, you have really, you've taken us to a really good place. I'm not sure how long we've been talking. Praise God. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm enjoying every. How long were we at? Uh, hour and two minutes. Okay. Whew. My goodness. Okay. All right. We got a few questions. <laughs> we're going to take some questions. Is there anything else that the Lord has placed on your heart that you would like to share? No, I feel Dear like, heart. I feel like we've explored a lot. Let me just say how much I appreciate you and the, the wisdom you have brought to this podcast mm-hmm. on this day, on this very day. You have, a, you have made me so proud. And I'm so relieved because I had no idea what we were going to talk about. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. So so let's do this. Let's let's transition for a moment. Um, someone is telling us that we have questions. That means you've got questions. Y'all hit on two things. Right? Y'all hit on almost, I have, I have something for you, Sharon. Mm-hmm. Let's get your thoughts. But, Michael, what, no, this is both y'all. What do you do when all of those stages are colliding in a man of the same time? Meaning, y'all talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. I haven't read the book, but mm-hmm. I'm like, based on the descriptions of what she said, I've seen those play out in different men, and sometimes in the, they're going through a trauma, and they're still working through understanding their sexuality, understanding their maturity, like all the different layers that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Do you, how do you navigate when those four layers are hitting? Those, those when there's layers, overlap. Overlap. Of, of okay, so, so I'm glad you asked that question. Here is something that is so important, because most of us don't really understand what stage we're in when we're in it. Right. We're not intentional about growing and developing so that we can be prepared for the next. Right. So what happens is 
you don't have to graduate from the follic stage. You can take that undeveloped follic stage into your warrior season. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. now you're in the season where you should be conquering, Come on. but you're still struggling. Well preached. <laughs> and now you struggle with your identity, maybe your sexuality, maybe your sexual integrity, but you're supposed to be working yeah. and focusing on starting a business and yeah. starting a church yeah. and or, or maybe doing something in the community. It, number thing. Now you're doing that, but your focus and passions are not focused mm -hmm. because now you, you're still struggling privately. So when you struggle privately, you tend to lack confidence publicly mm -hmm. because now the place where you would draw that confidence is conflicted mm -hmm. because you know you're not you you were up late last night, you were arguing with your wife, mm -hmm. you haven't done the things you should do, and now what you're presenting is a little less than authentic. But then you get wounded. Because now you're making mistakes. You're right. doing things like that. These things can overlap. I think it's important to stop where you are. Pause, yeah. Get some help. That's good. And go back to where you needed to develop first. For me, yeah. I was not able to yeah. move forward yeah. until I went back to the boy yeah. who yeah. had a broken identity yeah. and helped heal him yeah. so that we can then fight. And can I bring something up with that? And I, I hope you're okay with me sharing Please, this. Please, share. One of the most At my powerful, expense, I'm okay. Start powerful. over. Start over. <laughs> At my expense, please. One of the most powerful things I, I witnessed is, again, when I talked about trust your instincts but not necessarily your judgment or your conclusions, is when we're going through a tough stage in our marriage, I thought the problem was one thing. But it wasn't until you and I went to counselors at Covenant Church when they told you, Mike, you need to go through grief counseling. Go back. For your biological mom. Exactly. And that life event happened when you were two. Yes. They said, we're not going to keep talking about the marriage. We, we, you know, that's good and that's great. But no, Mike, you need to go back. Mm -hmm. And I watched you immediately <sighs> get signed up. Go through that process. You're trying to make me cry. It again. was not easy. I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm going into the wild. <laughs> I, gotta Literally. Get, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is that? <laughs> You're acting up now. Because <laughs> I have to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <sighs> it's real. I, I had to go to group therapy. Yeah, go, grief counseling. And grieve yeah. my mother who passed when yeah. I was a baby. Because there were, there were certain stages that, again, someone from the outside, they were able to look at him and track, okay, you got stuck here. You're in a, an emotional rut. Let's go back and let's process through. <sighs> and it was, it was powerful. And, and I, I just want to say this, and so I'm crying, that, but I didn't realize because Isaiah was young then. We hadn't had Nathan yet. But our boys can be who they are today and who mm. they're becoming because you, back then, decided to encourage and in faith go through the process. Do you not realize that the beginning of my healing, uh, when it comes to my sexuality, and in sexual integrity was going to grief therapy. Mm -hmm. Grieving the loss, of, the loss of my biological mother. You know, this is the reason you have to be careful telling somebody something's wrong with them. Mm, come on now. Because what you might be looking at is them acting out of a traumatic experience mm -hmm. that they could not help. Mm -hmm. Or even I wanted to talk, and I came into that counseling. Yeah, we we 
I got I a no problem. Clue. It's me. I never even mentioned any of her issues, but I wasn't thinking about my mother. No, and the more they asked thing. about me, they were like, oh, man, you, you. it was like for the first time someone looked at me and told me, oh, no, it's not. That is this. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're so mm-hmm. sorry that this happened to you. Let's yeah. help you. Yeah. They wanted to help me with something I didn't even know was broken. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm sitting in like, I don't know, it was eight weeks. Yeah, it was it was a good two of three a months. group therapy yeah. session every week with people who had recently lost someone. Yeah. Yeah. And I but here's what I found, Siobhan. Mm-hmm. They told me when you lose someone like that, especially a parent. You don't feel like it's okay to say some things you want to say. Mm. Not only were you traumatized, you've been silenced. Yeah. You aren't even allowed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You aren't allowed to be angry. Mm -hmm. I had to go through those emotions like Mm -hmm. it just happened. Mm -hmm. I had to be, by this time, my father had passed away. And my mother had passed away. So now I got to go through the grief process for both of them and say things about my father, who is now a hero because he's in heaven. Yeah, yeah. You ain't supposed to say nothing about your daddy. He's in heaven. Yeah, it's tough. He got his wings. Yeah. (laughs) That ain't in the Bible, okay? Your daddy got his wings. Keep your mouth off your daddy. He got his wings. (laughs) Every time you hear a bell ring. Oh, no. That means another angel got his wings. Your daddy just got his wings. (laughs) Ding, ding. That was so silly. But my I had to then they they made it safe for me yeah. to speak. Yeah. As not speak as an adult. They let me speak as a the child. child. Yes. So I was able to start healing. And eventually we were able to talk about, okay, now let's get to this this a, a more current issue about how you how you see yourself, how you deal with your sexuality, how you deal with your identity. And to see that journey go from season to season and to be where I am right now. And no, I just, just for me to tell you that from our own personal experience, we walk through these things Mm -hmm. and something you lost could very well be the thing Mm -hmm. that's got you locked up. Mm -hmm. Siobhan, Mm -hmm. thank you for pointing that out. That's powerful. Yeah. And, and I think that's freeing and liberating for people to know Mm -hmm. as it was for me because here it is. I wasn't all better after that therapy, mm-hmm. but I was a lot better. Yeah. Like I was a lot easier to live with. Yeah. Yeah. I had a clearer mind and yeah. I was on a better trajectory. I feel like a part of you had gotten reconnected. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, okay. I keep saying, do you have anything else? Because everything mm-hmm. you say, <laughs> everything you say is so good. Thank you. And praise God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. For the women, mm-hmm. culturally, the way you are serving her mm-hmm. sounds like babying a man. Well, I love to baby my man. I understand that. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's let's speak. Let's speak. Let's speak straight on this. Culturally, yeah. This is important. Like culturally, they would put, culturally it would, it would push away uh-huh. from that because it's like, oh, you're babying a man. Uh huh. Why do I have to grow him up? Why uh-huh. do I have to mature him? Okay, so so I want to highlight a couple things you said. Because I'm not growing anybody up. I'm not developing anybody, you know. And I know a lot of women struggle with that because they think that they're the ones. Ladies, we are not God, okay. Um, and so what you're doing is you're creating a fertile environment, for his growth, should he choose to grow? Okay, yeah. so my disposition of humility and service is out of my love for God. And he tells me in his kingdom, the greatest is a servant. The greatest has a servant's heart. Yeah. My culture, even though I have a culture which is my skin color, my highest and my best and my greatest culture is the culture of Christ. And the Bible tells me how to love. Over the years, I've chosen to surround myself with women that also have my culture. So I am acting out my culture. I'm acting out what's natural to me now 
because out of my love for God, I, I rejected models, even if they're my skin color, if you're not my culture, I'm not going to allow you to influence me and speak into my life. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's not a race thing. No, it's not. Cause I mean, that's I love, I love the skin I'm in. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. And you guys know, people that know me know I have natural hair. You know, oh, yeah, I love, she's all about I love that my life. people. She'll come in this podcast with a rap. <laughs> I sure like a whole will. African. I sure will. Yeah, yeah. So let me just point this out. The nature of this conversation is about my wilderness journey. So a lot of our conversation is is being directed to how she helped me. Mm-hmm. She's not talking about her journey necessarily mm-hmm. on. See, you understand. And here's an overlap that I don't even know if we have time to, to dig into. But while I've got my wilderness thing to figure out, mm-hmm. she had one too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I got a chance to get both versions of Siobhan. Mm-hmm. The, the Siobhan you get today, mm-hmm. that's not the same Siobhan mm-hmm. that I got how many years ago? You, well, if it's 2024, now going on 22 years. It's been 20, almost 22 years yeah. this year. So, okay, I just put like well, this. Well, if you include our dating time, 26. Okay, so let's oh just let's put this thing, let's put this thing <laughs> down the middle. Wow. <laughs> the last 10 years has been very different than the first. Yes. So the, the point is that she had to wrestle in her own context. And then there's an ongoing process that we both participate in. Mm-hmm. As a husband, the, the environment you set for her it gives her the opportunity, should she so choose, exactly, <laughs> to grow. I, I've learned something. I talked to a lot of my, my friends, and I, re, I remember one time in particular, uh, and you, I don't know if you remember this, we were moving, mm-hmm. and a, a buddy of mine was with us, and you wanted, we were moving in, oh, yeah. and you <laughs> wanted a piece of furniture <laughs> in a place I knew it did not belong. <laughs> I have this ability, you know, engineering, design. I can see spaces, <laughs> and I know that ain't going to fit over there. Yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah. But it was it was in the heat of the moment, and mm. she got huffy, puffy in front of my boy. I was like. Because, ladies, I was born type A and very strong-willed. Listen. So just don't just know that what you see today is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on now. Let's that's, yeah. that's, that's flip the table. <laughs> I want you to cry. <laughs> I ain't, I'm done okay. crying. I'm done with this. Let's talk about your wilderness. <laughs> no, we don't have enough time. How I got over. Listen, how she got over, not me. I'm just so it's your turn. So here, yeah. he, that's this story is so powerful because he was just asking me mm-hmm. before we walked in the house. How do you deal with your wife when it seems like she just <laughs> won't give? Like she just and he just was like just going on. And so we got in the house, and it's no sooner we got in that room, uh-huh. you started showing up. Uh-huh. I was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> what's today? What time of the month is this? <laughs> oh, this is this is the twentieth. I think this must be the twenty. This Uh-oh, got to be this time. got to be the, like, around the twentieth, twenty fifth. <sighs> Okay, man, real quick, track your ladies. Track cycles. Track know it. Know what time of the month it because is. Because you, you. You, you have to know when to hold them. <laughs> See, come on. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't win, okay? Uh, depend on it's the week. It's a certain time of the month. What I'm trying to say, can you hear me? What I'm trying to say, no, no, we don't care what you're trying nope. to say. So that happens. We walk out, and I demonstrate in real time. I said, man, listen. I don't have to respond. I'm not going to give energy to that. She's upset. I don't know what's going on with her. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to put it where she asked, and I'll talk to her about it later. Mm-hmm. Now, what would you call that? Is that me being a punk? No. Is that me being less than a man? No, sir. Is that me not being masculine? Mm-hmm. Is that me putting up with toxic femininity? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's called wisdom. It's called I don't have to win this. Yeah. Yeah, That's no good. urgency for her to agree with me in this moment. So I'm moving. And we go back in. I place it where she wants it. I, we walk back out, get mm-hmm. some more furniture. The next time we walk in, this is literally under five minutes. She apologizes. Holy Ghost got me. She was like, you know what? I don't know what got into me. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. You're right. Mm-hmm. That doesn't go there. Wherever you want to put it, babe. And he looked at me and was like, you're right. It worked. 
And I was like, thank you. Because I'm like, goodness, <laughs> she's showing out. I, I was just telling this guy how good of a marriage I've got. What better example than him to see us resolve yeah. a petty conflict? Yeah. But here's now here's the here here is the lesson. Don't give the energy back. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about this before. Yes. It mm-hmm. stands to be repeated. The circle of causality. Yeah. This is yeah. when someone does something you don't like mm-hmm. and then you give a reaction. Mm-hmm. When you react, not respond, mm-hmm. you spin the cycle. Mm-hmm. Then they don't like what you did. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the cycle ensues. Mm-hmm. I've learned stop the cycle. And this is great for men mm-hmm. when you when you're talking about dealing with a woman in a sensitive moment where her emotions may be getting the best of her. You need to use the best of you and compartmentalize and That's stop good. the cycle. That's good. Here, here's another way of putting it. Go to Hawaii in your mind <laughs> for just a few minutes. <laughs> Let her get the rest of that out. Listen and I hear her out. Respond and say, well, you know what? I love you. You know, we, we'll get through this. <laughs> As opposed to you saying, you know what? I don't like this. And let me tell you what I feel. Mm-hmm. That's not going to get you nowhere. Mm-hmm. But my point is, even in those moments, it's the environment that I'm trying to set for her mm-hmm. to feel safe. Yeah. And when a woman, can I preach here? Mm-hmm. When a woman feels safe, mm-hmm. it's not when a woman knows she's right. Right. It's when a woman knows she's safe, mm-hmm. even when she's not right. Yeah, it's good. That's when you start getting the kind of woman that you see right there. It's the truth. I mean, and another thing, not to get twisted, when you, when it's important enough, yeah, you will say what needs to be done after considering my input, yep. getting wisdom, and you'll stand on your two feet and you will not budge. There it is. And that is a blessing. Hold on. I'm going to, uh, the wings. <laughs> hold on. We we got to keep this because I want to conclude this moment. Um, I'm going to go get the door. You want to see who's here? Oh, is this Mr. Rogers? <laughs> oh, awesome. Timing is perfect. They're right on time. Hey, guys. Come Hi, on friends. In. We're right in the middle of finishing this. Final part of the podcast. Your timing is perfect. Right. Hi, I just want to know we're getting real. Oh, my goodness. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello. Hello. Still going. Still recording. Hey, they're talking about Mary. Hey, we're talking about Mary. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, there it is. What, where was I? What was I saying? When it's something that's important, oh no, you, no, you're right. You will lead. Here it is. Yes. I do not waste my bullets. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. Don't, don't fire. Yep. Hold them. You yep. don't need them. Yep. You don't need to use power when you can use grace. Yep. You don't need to use power when you can lose use sensitivity. Yeah. You don't need to use that. That's what I'm saying. Like that. That positional authority of mm-hmm. I'm a man. Mm-hmm. I don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. What I need to do is make her feel safe, safe enough to submit to me as and a man. Receive that leadership, yeah. And sometimes what that means is allowing her to say what she needs to say. Mm-hmm. Here it is. It doesn't, her thoughts are not a threat to me. Mm-hmm. I don't, it's not a threat. Mm-hmm. I can recall sitting down, having a conversation, and she was saying things, and she was, and, and what I, the way I was hearing it, they all, to me, at first, sound like, she is tearing me apart. And then the Holy Spirit said, no, she's not. She's sharing with you her perspective and how she feels. Mm-hmm. She's not talking about you. Yes. She's talking <laughs> about herself. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, isn't that a like a relief? Yeah. I can sit here and listen to her. Is it complaining? Huh. If you want to look at it that way. Because remember, I'm the oldest of five, so I had no issues growing up being able to speak yeah, my feelings. Yeah, freely. Very freely. And if, <laughs> yes, if you do have a, I don't want to say boss chick, but if you have. <laughs> Type A personality. If you have somebody that's freely. Wife, yes. 
<laughs> who feels free to speak. Yes. Okay. <laughs> then what all that means is you have to be free enough to listen. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that listening costs me nothing. Yeah. But it profits me everything. Mm -hmm. If I listen until she feels safe, then she'll hear me. But not only that, I get to hear the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because it's hard to listen to God when you're moving your jibs. It's like when you just you get to yak, talking, it's hard to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit tell you anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your wife is telling you exactly what she needs as she's lamenting. Yeah, She's saying, I, when my wife, I learned to interpret, and she, would, she, she used to tell me this, I missed it for years. She would tell me, all I want is a hug. Now, that's not all the time. There's some, you know what I mean? So she, <laughs> sometimes, you know, a hug will lead to things. But, but, but no, that's me. That's, that's me. That's, no, that's mine. That's mine. I, I own that. I don't want just a hug. No, never. I ain't need it all. <laughs> never. Okay. But that's me. <laughs> Hold me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but she 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 would tell me, like, you respond out of offense when I really needed you to respond out of sensitivity. I need help. I'm not okay. I need love. I need hug. I need hugs. I need all those things. And I learned to, to do that for her and to be someone she can feel safe with. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I love this. How, where are we at, Hector? How, how are we on time? Wow. We've been talking for a minute. So listen, I want to say thank you guys so very much for hanging out with us. Um, this this has been an incredible podcast because I think you guys are getting a chance to see, mm -hmm. getting a chance to see why um, I'm writing the book Life in the Wild. Mm -hmm. Like why, like it's not, this book is not about being a better praise and worship leader. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't say anything in this book about leading worship. Mm -mm. I don't even talk about, you know, I don't mind this because I think a lot of times I'll do conferences oh, and events time, yeah. and I'll talk about those things. Yeah. A lot of times people want to know, how do you sing fast songs or how you transition between songs? Or, tell mm -hmm. me about spontaneous worship and tell me how you prophetically do this or tell me about PCO and how you organize and how you lead. And I think those things are valuable and I can teach you those things and we can talk about artistry and songwriting. But if you learn all those things and you don't know how to navigate the personal space of your heart yeah. and how yeah. to embrace your wilderness, yeah, I'm not good. talking about a, we a wilderness season. Yeah. I'm not talking about a bad time in your life you're trying to get through. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a permanent place of growth. Yeah. If you don't get that... Mm -hmm. You won't get this. So good. It doesn't matter how good you are at whatever you think you want to do. You will never succeed beyond the level of your personal integrity. So good. It will catch up with you and expose you. And I think that will be for your benefit mm -hmm. because I believe God allows some things to happen to stop us in, tra in our tracks. And, and I think about myself, there were seasons, a one, one time period in particular, that I was hoping I would get a record deal. Mm -hmm. I was doing everything I could mm -hmm. to get this album out. I did everything I could do. I talked to everyone I could talk to, and it seemed like nothing would work. Can I tell you why, why sometimes those things you do don't work? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe God is standing in your way. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not you doing more work. Maybe it's not you singing well enough. Maybe it's not you being a better musician or a better producer. Maybe it's not you being a better speaker or preacher. Maybe God is standing in your way. Mm -hmm. And maybe he's standing in your way to protect you from ruining your own reputation. That's good. Perhaps, like myself, I'm not preaching at you. I'm only telling you my testimony. Maybe you're not as ready as you think you are. Mm -hmm. Maybe a part of you is not as complete as your talent is. Yeah. Oh, no, your talent was ready 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But your character, 25%. That's good. And the grace of God, by his mercy, will hold you until you get to the 75. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what your ministry is all about. What's going to protect you from making the worst decisions. Yeah. Won't, won't be your talent. Your talent will prematurely expose you mm -hmm. to an opportunity for a decision you're not ready to make. That's good. 
That's my story. And that is the reason I, I'm, I'm working on this book. And that is the reason I want to give this to you, because these are chapters and pages like right out of my life mm -hmm. that I believe is going to be a blessing to you. Life in the Wild, the book, mm -hmm. working on it right now. Today, as of today, Lanisha, Darius, as of today, yes. chapter seven is complete. The first, mm -hmm. the first, <laughs> yeah. We've got chapter one through seven, and over the next few days, eight, nine, and then 10. Who knows? It yeah. may be 11 and 12. Yeah. But the, these are pages out of my life. Just this morning, I was just talking to Rob earlier about how I felt the Lord leading me to be more vulnerable than transparent and why I'm writing certain chapters. That's awesome. Chapters about overcoming cravings. This chapter I wrote today about letting it come to you, about not chasing what God wants to reward you with. Mm -hmm. so much. I can't wait to share with you guys. So thank you all for hanging out with us. This yeah. is incredible. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah. For hanging out. Anything, I, any closing parting words you'd I like got to? One more quick thing. It's just a challenge to the ladies, to the wives. Take the next 30 days, draw like a woman of understanding, draw the wisdom out of your husband about his vision for you guys' life together, his personal vision, write it down and pray over it. Mm. And tell us in the comments how that went. Yeah. I love to, to hear that. And the book. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Book. The Masculine Journey. The Masculine Hicks. Journey. Let us know how you guys enjoy reading There will that. be a quiz. <laughs> All right. Hold on. <laughs> Robin Hector, do you guys remember the four stages? Do you guys remember? I'll, that is not. <laughs> with that being said, this is life in the wild. Yes. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Not to make me popular or famous. It's not about me. We're doing this right now. No one's no one's paying us to do this. We're investing in this because we believe in the mission God has placed us on to be examples and models for for other people who who need who need that. Yeah. Uh, I want you to share this also with someone else. We've mm -hmm. we've often lamented and talked about, man, we need a space that's safe for us. Someone who understands us. And you, you'll talk to people who are doing what they're doing. You want to know, how, how did you get there? How are you doing this? Well, this space has been curated to answer some of those questions and to get behind the scenes a bit, to go a little bit deeper, to tell you the things that most people don't want you to know. Mm -hmm. Most people aren't trying to sit and cry, re reminiscing the times of pain and talking about, you know, grieving and all the different. That's not that's not something people f necessarily find exciting. But for us, because we're tapped into purpose, it's exhilarating. Yeah. I mean, I feel great right now, and I want to share this with you, and I would love it if you would share it with someone else who needs it. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. Thank you, baby. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Hector. Thank you, Rob. Thank, thank you for being here with us. Life in the Wild podcast. Exceptional people, exceptional callings, living an exceptional lifestyle. God bless you.